Hello everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we're going to learn an absolutely beautiful stitch called the Jasmine Stitch. This is one of the more complicated stitches to work, but it creates an absolutely stunning, uh, thick and plush fabric when it is complete. The fabric is the same on both sides and it is fairly solid in nature. Today for the tutorial I'm going to be using a little bit of Pima cotton yarn. Now this is a yarn eater, eater as far as it uh, goes for stitch patterns. So you're going to want to have a little bit more on hand if you're wor working a larger swatch. This is a worsted weight cotton yarn. I'm also using a five millimeter crochet hook. Links to both of these items can be found in the description of this video. Also in the description, you'll find a direct link to my free pattern, written pattern, which is on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com. So thank you so much for joining me. While you're here, I invite you to subscribe, take a look around, and uh, check out some of the other stitch tutorials that are available here. This channel is updated every week. The Jasmine stitch is created by working a number of puff stitches and puff cluster stitches. So for this stitch, you're not going to start off by working a foundation chain per se. We're going to work a foundation of puff stitches. So to work your foundation puff stitches, you're going to start by making a slip knot and then by chaining one and you're going to pull your loop up a little bit. The larger you make your loops, the larger your Jasmine stitches will be. Um, so you can keep that in mind. You're going to want to be able to make them all roughly the same length. So do something that's a little bit comfortable for you. So you're going to chain one and pull up a larger loop. You're then going to yarn over, insert your hook back into that first chain stitch, yarn over and draw up a loop to the same height. You want to do that a total of three times. So then yarn over, Insert your hook into that first chain stitch, yarn over, draw the loop, and one more time, yarn over, insert your hook into that chain stitch, yarn over, and draw up a loop. You'll have seven loops on your hook. Now here it gets a little bit tricky. You, what I do is using my thumb and my middle finger, I'm going to hold back my working yarn and I'm going to yarn over and draw it through all seven loops on my hook, but I'm still holding on to the working yarn there. You don't want to pull it all the way through. You're then going to finish your puff stitch by inserting your hook under that working yarn that you've held back. Yarn over and draw up a loop and yarn over and pull through two loops, kind of like a single crochet stitch. That's your first foundation puff stitch. You're going to want to work these puff stitches until you've reached your desired length. So I'm going to today work a total of nine of them. So to work our next puff stitch, again you're going to pull up your loop a little bit so it's a little bit longer, yarn over, this time insert your hook. I just insert it through the center of that single crochet. Yarn over and draw up a loop. Do that three times. One, there's two, and three. Other designers might do fewer or more uh, yarn overs for the foundation puff stitches. I find this size just gives you a nice cozy looking uh, stitch down at the bottom. You're then going to once again hold back your working yarn, yarn over, pull it through all seven loops, then insert your hook under that yarn that you've held back, yarn over, drop a loop, yarn over and pull through two. So do that until you have your desired number of puff stitches. I'm going to work uh, 10 today. That 
that's three. Four. six eight and 10. Once you have your foundation row of puff stitches worked, you're going to work puff clusters all the way across, working into the single crochet stitches or into these spaces that are in between each of the puff stitches. So to work your first puff cluster, you're going to start by extending your loop, once again, a little bit higher. You're then going to yarn over and insert your hook into that first single crochet or into that first space. Yarn over and draw up a loop. You'll do that three times. There's one, two, and three. You're going to have a total of seven loops on your hook. You're then going to skip the next puff stitch and again into the next single crochet or into the next space there, you're going to work another puff. So yarn over, insert your hook into this next space, yarn over, drop a loop, do that three times. You'll now have, let me see here, seven, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 loops on your hook. You're going to skip the next puff stitch and do it one more time into the next single crochet space. So 1, 2, and 3. You'll have a total of 19 loops on your hook. Once again, holding back your working yarn. I'm just pinching it with my thumb and middle finger. You're going to yarn over and very carefully pull it through all 19 loops on your hook. Then bring your hook and insert it under that working yarn that you've held back. Yarn over and drop a loop. You have two loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through two loops. That is your puff cluster stitch. You're going to work puff clusters all the way across that foundation row. So pull your loop up a little bit longer, work your first puff stitch into the center of that first single crochet at the end of the last puff cluster just worked. So yarn over, insert your hook into the center, yarn over, drop a loop, do that three times. Your next puff stitch is going to be worked in the next single crochet stitch down on your foundation row. Skip the next puff stitch into that next single crochet. Repeat, work a puff stitch, holding back those loops on your hook. Once you have 19 loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through. Insert your hook under that yarn that you held back, yarn over and drop a loop yarn over and pull through two loops. OK, 
continue to work your puff clusters all the way across. When you come all the way across, you're going to work your final puff cluster. And you're going to be inserting your hook at the end of the foundation row into that first chain stitch for your last puff cluster. It is a little bit awkward in this first row. That then brings you to the end of your first row of puff clusters. You're then going to chain one and drop a loop fairly long and turn your work. For your row two, you're going to start by working a puff stitch into the first or into the top of the last cluster stitch made. So yarn over, insert your hook, at the base of your chain, yarn over, drop a loop, do that a total of three times. Holding back your working yarn, yarn over and pull through. Then insert your hook under the working yarn, yarn over, pull through, and yarn over and pull through two. You're then going to work puff cluster stitches in the same way all the way across, just as you did for your row two. So pull up your loop, Yarn over, insert your hook into that first single crochet at the base of the loop that you just drew up. Then uh, keeping all those loops back on your hook, you're going to insert your hook once again at the base of that first puff stitch made. It's going to create uh, kind of a center for your flower and then yarn over, work your next puff stitch in the next single crochet space of your next jasmine stitch. Hold your yarn back, pull through all the loops on your hook. Insert under your working yarn, yarn over, pull through, and yarn over and pull through two. Then continue to work your, ja uh, your puff cluster stitches all the way across. Now that's all there is to working the pattern. For the pattern you're simply going to continue to repeat this row two for as long as you would like and then fasten off and weave in your ends and that is how you work the jasmine stitch. I'm just going to finish one more cluster here so you can see because the pattern is really starting to come through now. Just like so. So thank you so much for joining me. If you happen to work this stitch, feel free to tag me on social media. I'd love to admire your work. Thank you so much for joining me. And once again, don't forget to subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Until then, happy crocheting. Bye.